let's start with your you know introduction tell me something about yourself okay uh my name is namita singh uh, i'm basically from bhubaneswar odisha uh, mm-hmm. currently i'm pursuing pursuing my btech degree in computer science and coming to my academics uh, i have scored an aggregate of 82% in 10th standard and 60% in 12th standard and my current cgpa is 7.5 out of 10 uh except my uh, academics my interest lies in software development i am proficient in java uh, ajuraj i have knowledge about data structure dbms sql html css i have a decent problem solving skill and analytic thinking also i have completed some certifications uh, like in java in python and web designing and my final year project is uh, crypto life tracker Okay that's very impressive so tell me about your crypto project Yeah so basically this crypto life tracker this is the website where mm-hmm. you can track the live uh, prices of the trending crypto coins or whichever c- crypto coins you want to find out as uh, this this crypto coins are the uh, this our area like india and in south uh, south asia this is a a uh, very largest epicenter for crypto and blockchain technology so uh, keeping in that mind we work on this project uh, i have used uh, coin gecko api and access it to track the live data of crypto coins okay fine so i just want to know that why are you choosing software engineer as a profession like why do you think will it be you know professionally and personally fulfilling to you yeah so uh, software industry uh, from my childhood uh, i am fascinated sorry from my childhood i was interested in software because my father was in computer and hardware business so growing up on uh, growing up old i was always i was always interested in software so yeah. i always uh, it was my aim to be uh, coming to this industry and uh, uh, do a uh, to get a good role in this industry hmm okay great mm-hmm. and like why you would like to work in our company okay uh, yeah there are several reasons to join your company firstly mm-hmm. it's a great privilege for anyone to work in a reputed company like yours you have more than 2.5 uh, lakh employees your company is one of the greatest contributor to the country economy as well as it it became the fourth indian company to cross 100 billion in market capital capitalization mm-hmm. uh, secondly uh, from my linkedin connections and seniors i came to know about the uh, learning programs and trainings your company provide the hacker ranks you organize uh, so by the um, by your education centers so that also attracts me and uh, thirdly this company provides uh, a good help a good environment for the employees so being a fresher i want to boost my confidence to get by a good environment so i want to join your companies because of for these reasons mm okay fine okay suppose uh, nibedita if we select you okay, okay then how will you add value to our company like if i say it in a straight forward manner mm-hmm. then why should we select you in our company okay there is no doubt there are more ca- more uh, candidates who are much talented than uh, me but being a professor i think i am very flexible and adaptive and adaptive to learn any things or learn new things uh, i learned that how to be a good team player how to work in a uh, how to coordinate with your team members i'm sure that is a very good quality of mine which i will bring to uh, bring to the table i'm confident that i will be able to contribute to the growth of your company so that that's why i think i am a suitable candidate for your company okay great to hear this see uh, all of us have some you know strengths and weaknesses so yes. i would like to know what are your strengths and weaknesses yeah so i believe that my greatest strength is uh, the ability to solve problems quickly and efficiently i can see any given situation from multiple perspectives the problem solving allows me to do a better communicate uh, to be a better communicator so i am just as comfortable as speaking to a senior executive as i am to a junior member i think my ability to see uh, all sides of an issue will make me a, 
great asset to the team and coming to my weakness uh, i realized uh, before some time that uh, social media platforms like uh, facebook instagram twitter are my weakness because sometimes i spent lot of time on that so as i realized uh, i started working on that i bound myself to select a particular time period of the day so when i will use the social media uh, and i also change my preferences for the platforms i have changed uh, my platform preferences like facebook to linkedin so now if i am using the social platforms uh, i am connecting to uh, various uh, informative groups and uh, senior developers so that i can acquire knowledge even though i am on social media so that is your weaknesses these yes. are your weaknesses right yes okay spending more time on social media yes okay fine and so according to you like what is the difference between you know confidence and over confidence yeah so i think confidence is uh, believing on my strength building on my uh, skills and my abilities and over confidence is uh, uh, believing only on myself like if i am the only person who is capable to get job i am the only person to achieve the greatest uh, job so i think that only what is the main difference between the confidence and over confidence if i believe my on myself that is my confidence if i believe only on myself then that will be my over confidence i consider this hello yeah sorry uh see you know we expect our team members to set their mm -hmm. professional goals short term yeah. and long term both so yeah. what are your short term and long term goals my short term goal is to explore my knowledge throughout the training programs so that i can perform well in the production to gain a position a good position like a team leader and my long term goals are to earn new responsibilities with the company and ultimately reaching a higher position as uh, the open and helping the company uh, succeed in the long term okay fine let me ask you one question which might surprise you uh, okay. do you know how many iphone users are there in india uh iphone users yeah uh i don't know the exact number of uh, iphone users in india mm -hmm. uh but i can uh, uh i can say that approximately there is a percentage between 50 to 60% maybe because iphone is now a very demanding product in our uh, country now so i guess there is a chance of 50 to 60% of the of our country are uh, uh, iphone users but you are, might be wrong yeah you are giving some approximate numbers to me okay <laughs> yes okay uh fine okay let's move on mm -hmm. do you know what is palindrome numbers and how you are going to write program for it yeah so basically the palindrome number if we reverse if the if we reverse the digits of the number it will be the same that we consider as a palindrome number for example 111321191272 like this so for that i think the logic is in the definition if we use a while loop and if we uh, store the digits from the uh, if we store the digits from the reverse order and then we can compare the real number with after reversing the number if both the numbers are same then we can find out which one is a palindrome number so that will be the logic for palindrome hmm okay and do you know why a fibonacci series is used if yes then could you please also explain the steps to write a fibonacci program yeah yeah so fibonacci uh, series uh, usually uh, the third term of a fibonacci series is the summation of the uh, last two terms so that is the fibonacci series i know uh, why it is used uh, uh, 
again i don't know the exact answer but uh, as of my knowledge i think fibonacci using fibonacci series uh, the productive uh, the flow so it will increase the productivity if we use it like a process because the output will, will always be greater than the previous output so maybe it can be used as a productivity process and to write the fibonacci program we can simply uh, so the first term and the second term in a variable then can use the calculate variable every time change the initial terms and we can uh, find out the third term and then the third term will be the second and the second will be the first so if we use the temporary variables we can maintain the fibonacci series flow and every time each time we will get the third term as the output and the series will be maintained so that will be the logic for that fibonacci series program okay so uh, are you aware aware about db dbms concept can i ask you yes. a few questions if you are comfortable uh, yeah sure you can ask me okay so tell me what are the few you know disadvantages of using file processing system mm -hmm. okay so there are many drawbacks of file processing system it was a traditional way or it was a uh, process um, before some years so the following drawbacks i can say are uh, data redundancy and inconsistency difficulty in access accessing data if you are storing data in file structure there will be so many files and if whenever we try to access any data that will take a lot of time so difficulty in accessing data will be my second point then uh, data integrity is also another crucial point because back uh, crucial drawback because it is very hard to maintain uh, data integrity uh, with the file processing system then security problems is another issue because we can't uh, uh, keep the files for a long time uh, there is a issue of leakage so i think security problems uh, yeah so this much i can say the drawbacks of file processing system mm -hmm. okay could you tell me like what are what are the three levels of abstraction mm, yeah okay so the three uh, levels of abstractions are physical logical and view level and physical is the lowest level of ab abstraction and it describe how the data are stored and then the logical level it is the next higher level of abstraction and that describe what data is stored in the database and uh, what relationship among those data and the highest level of abstraction uh, abstraction is view level and uh, it will describe that uh, the whole part of the entire database okay are you good in data structure as well uh yes i am aware of data structure okay so can you explain the difference between file structure and storage structure yes uh basically file structure is a representation of data into a secondary or auxiliary memory uh, for say any device like hard disk hard disks or pen drives so those stores data uh, which uh, remains intact until it is manually detected and is known as uh, and it is also uh, it can be also deleted and then uh, the storage structure Uh, in the uh, data is stored in the main memory that is ram and it is deleted once the function uh, that you just the data is get completely executed so whenever we are using uh, data to execute a function ram is used so the main difference between these two data structure file structure and storage structure is um, the memory of the computer system uh the file structure data is stored in auxiliary memory and the storage structure data is stored in a main memory okay and do you know about linked list yes i yeah think it so tell me why like linked list consider more efficient than arrays uh yes yeah linked list are efficient than arrays 
definitely because uh, linked list is a dynamic data structure and array is static whenever we are performing operations like insertion and deletion it is very hard to perform on arrays comparing to list because uh, uh, a new room to be created for the new elements and uh, the existing elements must be shifted in case of array but in the linked list the same operation can be easier as you can update the address only uh, in in, to, in the next pointer of the node so uh, in case of operations linked list linked list is far better than arrays and uh, as i have already mentioned that linked list is a dynamic data structure we don't need to initialize the size at the time of creation but in case of arrays we need to initialize the size so the size will be fixed Okay, could you elaborate more scenarios and explain where one can use linked list and where we should use arrays? Uh, yes, I can. Uh, and I will explain whatever I have mentioned in previous question. So the first one will be like where well, the first thing is array static. So in the case when we don't know the exact number of elements we are going to store. we are we will use a linked list and uh, then uh, when we have large number of data to add uh, and remove we we have many operations to perform we will use linked list and for random access operations we will prefer linked list and uh, when we are, are to insert an item uh, anywhere in the list we will prefer a linked list um because it is dynamic so it will be preferable than array okay mm hmm just a second okay so the good answer fine but uh, could you tell me about the process behind storing a variable in memory yes uh a variable is basically a container to store the data uh, whichever data we are using for our functions whichever data we are using in program to contain the data a variable is used and uh, the data types data so uh, if we are storing the data in the memory the memory uh, uh, one two major things that is the, the data type so time first store the uh, the data structure used so uh, these things uh, and except this uh, the concepts like dynamic allocation so this based on so the amount the data structure and allocation and three factors uh, should be considered when we are storing the variable in mm -hmm. okay so you mentioned in the beginning that you worked in java yes i have worked in java i have worked in java uh, the oops concepts mm -hmm. and exceptions uh, i learned through java okay so like uh, tell me how does you know hash map handle collisions in java uh, okay Mm, uh, the java dot util dot hash map class in java uh, uses the approach of chaining to handle the collisions so um, in chaining if a new value with the same key are attempted to be pushed uh, then these values are stored in a linked list stored in a bucket so in a, what happened in the oops case scenario uh, uh, all the key might have the same hash code which will result uh, the hash table turning into a linked list again so in this case uh, i think the uh, al hashing algorithm should be taken care and uh, the complexity will be such in a value uh, in a linked list will be take uh, order of n uh, so i think the searching selecting a hashing algorithm will shall be taken care in case of this type of scenarios okay great nice 